How's it going guys? It's your old pal Baba Ganesh here again. So it's that time of the year where the weather's getting cold, weather's getting nasty, winter is on its way. Winter is coming. And it's time to start breaking out the warm gear to uh, go on your backpacking excursions to make sure you're safe, you're dry, and most importantly, you're nice and warm. However, finding the right balance between bringing too much weight and bringing the proper amount of clothing can be a tricky situation. Uh, one of the questions that I had on my recent backpacking trip uh, just the other week was how do I uh, keep my base weight down so nice and light during the cold weather while still maintaining something that keeps me nice and safe and nice and warm. So why don't we go over the clothing system and the layering system that I bring with me and the science behind it. Let's go ahead and get into it. So as you guys already know, I do go backpacking during the winter. And yes, it gets very, very cold. One of the questions I recently had in my previous video was, how do I maintain something that's so nice and lightweight, but still being able to keep myself really nice and warm? And the answer is very simple. It's not a matter of how many layers that you bring with you. It's a matter of bringing the correct layers. Now, certainly that can get a little bit tricky, but there are ways to do it very, very simply. Now, certainly the clothes that I wear during the day are a lot different from the clothes that I wear at camp. During the day, it's not necessary to wear the warmest clothes because the most important thing during the day is actually keeping yourself dry and keeping yourself cool. The most dangerous thing that you can let yourself happen um, is to let yourself sweat and to let yourself get wet. Uh, basically, all that's going to do is to pull body heat away from you. It's going to cool you down. That is a recipe for disaster and something that's going to lead directly to hypothermia. So during the day, you want to keep your layers simple. What I usually go with, I just wear the typical hiking clothes that I'll wear during the summer. You know, I'll start off my Columbia Silver Ridge hiking pants, my REI Co-op dry fit t-shirt, these again, very breathable, very moisture wicking. They're more of my summer gear. However, they are still a part of my winter gear. And that's primarily during the day to just keep myself nice and dry, um, keep myself cool enough. But again, since I'm exerting myself, I'm warming myself up from the inside out. So it's not necessary to really bulk up during the day. However, you still do have some pretty cold conditions. So certainly I do add possibly a couple little things to that in order to you know, still keep myself a little bit warmer in some pretty cold situations. You know, uh, up on top, up on my upper body, what I will do is I'll throw my Brooks uh, joggers, t my Brooks long sleeve jogger shirt over the top. Again, this is a very breathable moisture wicking layer. It's still long sleeve and everything. It does have a good neck uh, collar around it as well. So it certainly does provide me with a little bit of extra warmth, you know, as I'm hiking and as I'm exerting myself. It's just a quarter zip, so if I warm up too much, I can zip it down and get some, get some airflow through there. What I like about it, too, is the sleeves have the thumb holes. You know, the sleeves have the thumb holes, so I can keep that sleeve extended over my hands a little bit to at least give my hands and my arms some, uh, some full protection, keep it, out of, keep it out of the cold, keep it out of the, the wind and stuff like that. Um, these have performed great for me. Uh, something that you'll notice with a lot of my winter equipment is that they're all dark colors. And I do that for a particular reason. So obviously it's cold. Everybody knows that black absorbs the sun and helps warm you up. So during the winter, I can keep myself nice and lightweight because I know if it's nice and sunny, this is going to help absorb the warmth from the sun and help increase my uh, body temperature a little bit but still maintaining something that's really nice and breathable to help keep me dry. Now, if my legs are a little bit cold and my Columbia Silver Ridges just aren't doing the job at keeping me warm enough, certainly what I do have is my very, very nice, nice and simple, my synthetic uh, REI mid-weight base layers. They're very soft on the interior. Again, they're, uh, they're fairly breathable, but they do give me some extra warmth, some extra protection if it's a really cold and a really nasty day. You know, I don't need anything crazy bulky. I just need something lightweight just to give me one extra layer of protection. 
again, I'm moving, I'm exerting myself, I'm keeping myself warm, just staying active and whatnot. But I've had some pretty cold days where these really did come in handy. Um, I don't need anything substantial, but they do get the job done for me. And then, of course, on my feet, I simply just go with my regular darn tough socks. You know, I, I'm, as I'm moving, my feet are staying warm. I'm keeping myself warm. I don't need thick, heavy-duty wool socks to go into sub-zero temperatures with. You know, if I go with something that crazy, you know, one, I'm not used to wearing thick socks like that while hiking. And two, if my feet start, start to sweat, uh, that can just create problems for when I get to camp. That could be a recipe for disaster. So again, my hiking clothes during the day, I try to keep it nice and simple, uh, nice and breathable, nice and lightweight, but still add a couple minor little things to give me some of that extra weather protection against the colder elements. Now, the hardest part is finding the proper layering system for at camp, because at camp, you're not going to be moving around. Um, you, you have to try to keep yourself warm as best as you possibly can. But you need to find that balance between keeping yourself nice and warm and not bringing too much weight. Um, you know, as, as I probably previously said, it's not a matter of how many layers that you bring. It's a matter of bringing the proper layers, bringing the correct layers. And so there is a little bit of science behind it. And it comes down to really the rule of three. You're going to have your base layer that you're going to start with. You're going to have your midway insulating layer to put on top of that. And then as your third layer is called your outer shell. That's either going to be your secondary insulating layer or it's going to be your weather protectant shell. I'll say and or your weather protectant shell. And I'll get to that and I'll get to the reason behind while I'm saying and or at the end of the video there. So to start off with my own layering system. And something you probably guys, you guys have probably wondered about a little bit of how the heck does he keep himself warm at night? First and foremost are my ultralight smart wool base layers. These are the 150 gram base layers. They're very nice and lightweight. I'm really not quite sure what the actual weight of them is, but it's both of them combined. I mean, I'd probably say maybe like eight or eight, seven or eight or nine ounces or so. They're really nice and lightweight. Now, certainly these are the ultralight ones. The main intended purpose for your base layers or your next to skin layer is not really to keep you warm. It's intended to be a moisture wicking, breathable layer intended to keep you dry. Uh, one of the worst things that you can possibly do, especially during the day while hiking, is allow yourself to sweat, getting yourself wet. In cold conditions, everybody knows water freezes. So what happens if you start to sweat and that water gets cold? It pulls body heat away from you. It, it's a recipe for disaster, something that's going to lead right into hypothermia. So getting yourself you know, some great base layers that are going to be very breathable, great moisture wicking as well, help keep yourself dry as best as you possibly can. So these are the smart wool. I love smart wool products. Um, certainly everybody always, there are some people who are reluctant about wool. They, they figure it's going to be itchy and things. Smart wool is just amazing. It's very soft, very lightweight, very breathable. And wool is also a natural antimicrobial material. So odors from your body aren't going to transfer over to the material. So these are what I wear every single night at camp. These are my camp clothes. Um, you know, I want to keep myself clean, obviously, from what I'm wearing during the day. Uh, this is just what I wear pretty much in my sleeping bag. Just a simple, skinny, you know, long sleeve pant and shirt. My sleeping bag is fantastic, and these perform beautifully for me. Certainly, you do have some other options. If you're not a fan of wool or you're allergic to wool, whatever the case may be, take a look at some of the synthetics as well or silk on top of that. Silk, synthetic, and wool. Big no-no on cotton. No cotton whatsoever. All right, so silk, synthetic, or wool, breathable, moisture wicking, keep yourself dry, keep yourself protected, um, and also keep yourself comfortable while you're at camp on top of that. Now, next is going to be the initial layer that's going to provide you with the warmth that you're going to need for at camp. Obviously, you have shorter days, which means you're going to have to sit around at camp for a little bit longer than you otherwise would during the summer. Because you're not moving, 
Obviously, you're not generating body heat, which means you need to find this proper system that's going to help keep you warm, even just standing around or, or slowly walking around camp and picking up firewood and things. So I'll start off what I wear as pants, what I wear on top of my base layers. These are the REI Fleece uh, Teton Pants. Fleece is a great insulator. It's very nice and lightweight. It's still very breathable on top of that. Um, these are really, really nice and warm. They're so warm I can't even wear them in my own apartment because I just overheat with them. They do come with a great elastic waist as well that stretches pretty. Um, what you'll notice about these is they're not very baggy in the legs. They are intended to be form-fitting. Now the reason behind that is you don't want to create any dead space. Um, dead space is just space for cold air to fill in and, for, and then cool you down. So these are fairly form-fitting. Um, so certainly if you do, if you are looking for good insulated pants for a winter backpacking, check them out, but come with the understanding that they are going to be pretty snug. Um, and, and, and there's a, there's a purpose behind that. So these are absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love these. They, they keep my legs really nice and warm. Um, again, combined with my base layers, just super nice and soft, super comfortable and still pretty nice on the lightweight side. And again, I'm not hundred percent sure about the weight of these. I'd say again, probably maybe another eight ounces, eight, eight to 10 ounces or so. Um, you know, I, I don't have my scale with me right now. I, I'd have to do that at a later time, but very nice and lightweight. Again, still something that's extremely efficient at keeping you warm. Combining that with what I wear for my upper body, I do have here my North Face, my North Face Thermo Ball. This is the cut. This is the model from a couple years ago, but it still performs spectacular. So this is just a very lightweight synthetic, uh, lightweight synthetic jacket. It comes in at about 11 and a half ounces or so. Um, certainly is not down, and the reason I did that is because I wanted something that would also be able to withstand any any snow or rain and stuff. Especially if, in case I need to wear this during the day as I'm hiking, if I do start to sweat a little bit and perspire, at least I know this is going to uphold uh, upholds its integrity. Great. Um, you know, if it gets a little bit damp or something like that, I know this is just gonna this is gonna be just fine. So this has performed really great for me. This used to be my main outer shell. Um, you know, I had, I had another, I had a fleece hoodie and stuff like that, but it was really baggy and really bulky and just didn't work as efficiently. Um, so I opted to get rid of that. I upgraded to a better down jacket. And so this became my midway insulating layer. Um, you know, it just has snaps down the front. I will in the future look to possibly pick up something a little bit different that has more of the zipper so I can just grab and go. Otherwise, I have to sit there and, and snap all these little buttons together with cold fingers. It's not very fun, I'll tell you that much. But you know what? For the time being, the performance is still absolutely spectacular. It gets the job done. I've been very happy with this product so far. Um, so definitely, if you're looking for a midway insulating layer, um, take a look at either the North Face Thermo Ball. The Patagonia Nano Puff is also a fantastic midway insulating layer. Again, keep it nice and lightweight. But make sure you're having yourself uh, stay nice and warm at night. And last but not least, it comes to the third layer, the outer shell. Now, this can be either a secondary insulating layer or it could be your weather protecting layer. Now, I opted for the secondary insulating layer. And the reason behind that is because I do get down to some very cold temperatures. Uh, last year, I took a week long trip in New Jersey in the middle of February. Had a couple nights uh, combined with the wind chill, we're down to the single digits. Some snow, some freezing rain and flurries, so, uh, some pretty good wind there as well. Um, and in those kind of conditions, that kind of temperature, sitting around camp, a fire is great and everything. Um, however, you can only stand so close to a fire uh, before you <laughs> uh, before you start burning up. So I, I I wanted something that was very nice and lightweight but was also extremely warm. So you see me wear this before in my videos. This is my Arcteryx uh, Cerium LT down hoodie. This is an 850 fill down jacket. Comes in at only 8.1 ounces. 
Now you know how I'm able to keep myself nice and lightweight and keep myself really nice and warm. Um, a few really nice features about this, they do have a really lightweight zipper on both down, down the middle and also on the pockets on the side. Does have a little bit of an elastic waistband as well to help keep it snug around you. Elastics around the cuffs to again just trap in around your around your wrist there. The the hood fully zipped up creates a nice seal around your face, almost like a balaclava. And of course, you do have a draw cord in the back here if you need to tighten up that hood. This this jacket is extremely warm, extremely lightweight. It is a down jacket, so it collapses down next to nothing. It actually comes with a stuff sack that's about the size of, of a uh, about the size of a large orange. So just to give you an idea about how nice and lightweight, collapsible, but still extremely efficient at keeping you warm, this is it's just unbelievable. Um, I've been thoroughly impressed with this. This jacket is so warm that just around here, day to day stuff, I can only really wear this a few months out of the year because of how warm it is. As soon as it starts getting up into like the 50s and the 60s and stuff, I cannot even wear this because I just overheat. Something that I thought was great on their part, what they did was they actually put synthetic insulation into the armpits here. And they did that so in case you're sweating and you're perspiring, um, you know, that, that perspiration doesn't have any effect on any down that's here. It's synthetic and everybody knows synthetic, you can go swimming with it and it'll still keep you warm. Um, so this has done a really great job for me. I absolutely love this down jacket. It's arguably one of my favorite pieces of equipment in my entire gear set. Um, so certainly if you're looking for a more heavy duty warm down jacket, but something that's extremely light and lightweight, again, the Arcteryx Cerium LT hoodie. This is last year's model that comes in at 8.1 ounces. Uh, the newer model upgraded this year. Uh, comes in at not about nine and a half ounces. What they did was they went with a bit of a thicker material, not much thicker, and they put a little bit more synthetic insulation around the armpits and up on top of the shoulders. So I'm actually kind of glad I got last year's, the fact that it's only eight ounces. Um, again, I'm, I, as you can see with the smile on my face, I absolutely love this product. Um, I think the color is great as well. Again, as you can see, all my stuff during the winter is darker colors to help absorb any kind of sunlight that comes through to help warm me up a little bit. I know not a lot of people think about that, but you know, there, there's, you know, but it's something that is proven to work really great for me. You know, that's part of the reason why I got that Exos 48 as well. Now, certainly I got that pack primary reason because it's so comfortable and nice and lightweight, but it does come in a blue and like a silver color and then the black and the green. I go into backpacking, I opt for the black and the green so that it at least absorbs some sun and keeps the contents in my pack a little bit warmer than they otherwise would be. And then of course, as I was saying before, that and or uh, third layer, the outer shell. Certainly, I always, always have my rain gear with me. Now you guys have seen previous video, uh, I did a full gear review on this piece of equipment, as well as you saw this uh, You saw this on me during my backpacking trip last week. The Outdoor Research Helium 2 Rain Jacket. Again, this is only 6.4 ounces. It's very nice and lightweight. This gives me full water protection, uh, as well as wind protection as well. Now, certainly this, this isn't insulated at all. It's not intended to keep you warm. However, if I run, however, if it gets really bad, I can always toss this on over top of everything else um, and, and just give me one extra layer to help trap that body heat inside. I, I had to do that last week and, and I could absolutely notice a difference. Certainly this acts as a great wind uh, windbreaker, so that does certainly add on top of that. But just trapping in that body heat a little bit, give me one extra layer of protectant certainly goes a long way. And then, of course, you know, I do have my, um, my Outdoor Research Helium 1 rain pants. Again, very nice and lightweight. Um, you know, only comes in at 5.4 ounces. I'll do a full review on this particular item at a later time. But again, just weather protectant primarily. Um, what I did last week was I put this over the top of those fleece pants, my base layers and fleece pants. And again, it's just one extra layer to help trap in that body heat a little bit. Not insulating, but it certainly does help get the job done. Now the reason I said and or about that third layer with the weather protectant 
And that's because regardless of what season, you're always bringing some type of rain equipment with you. So I don't like to add this into that rule of three with the layering system. Um, and that's because, again, I'm bringing rain gear regardless. So I'm not going to add that onto a three-tier layering system um, when that's already going to be in my backpack. Uh, certainly, it does come in handy. You know, During the winter, I bring the full head-to-toe rain gear for that extra protection. Uh, during the summer, I opt for simply just the rain jacket. But this, this stuff is always in my backpack. I don't like to add it onto that, that three-tiered system. I like to keep that individual from this one. Now, of course, one of the biggest problems that I have personally, biggest problems that other people have, how the heck do you keep your feet warm at camp? That's a tough one. My feet are always one of the first things to get cold on me. Um, I don't know whether it's bad circulation or where, whatever the case may be, but my toes always get super cold. However, there's remedies for that, certainly. What I always start off with is just a pair of sock liners. Um, again, just kind of next to skin, breathable, moisture-wicking layer. Again, just kind of another barrier system. And then, of course, I have my nice heavy-duty uh, trekking weight smart wool socks. These are really nice and thick. There is one extra um, heavy-duty layer uh, above these called the mountaineering layer, I think it is. And certainly I might look to pick those up in the near future because my toes still get cold. But these really do help, um, especially inside my sleeping bag. My toes are so nice and warm all night long. You know, definitely pick yourself up a nice and really good heavy-duty wool socks combined with sock liners. They, they work wonders. Um, and the, again, I go with the sock liners for two folds, moisture-wicking, breathable. But if I decide to bring toe warmers with me, this creates a barrier against that toe warmer so I don't burn my skin. And then when I put this over the top of that, it just traps in that heat, keeps my toes, keeps my feet really nice and warm all throughout the night. So again, pick yourself up some really nice heavy-duty wool socks, some sock liners. Um, you know, keep your toes warm, keep your feet warm. That's always one of the worst things to deal with is cold feet and one of the toughest to try to get warm as well. Of course, of course you do have your hats, your gloves, your balaclavas and things. So I'll start off here. This is my very lightweight, just uh, smart wool, balaclava. Again, you know, I don't need anything crazy for a balaclava. I just need to keep my skin protected against the cold and the wind and stuff. Certainly this does provide some good warmth because it's right against my skin. But its main intended purpose is to just, you know, just be a, pr a protecting layer. Um, you know, when I bring my hood up and stuff for my, uh, my Arcteryx hat, it really keeps my head nice and warm. So this is kind of, this main purpose is for either during the day, a neck scarf for around that camp, um, and as well as it provides a good, like, condensation barrier for while I'm inside my sleeping bag because it is so lightweight. Just kind of, just, again, just gives me some extra protectant. You don't need anything substantial. This compacts down to nothing, nice and lightweight, nice and breathable. Very happy with it. As you guys can probably tell, I love smart wool products. What can I say? You guys have seen this in my videos. It's my very lightweight smart wool beanie. Um, again, you don't need anything crazy when it comes to a hat, anything super heavy duty. Um, you're releasing so much heat off the top of your head that just by tossing on something very lightweight, you can automatically just feel yourself warm up and you can feel your body temperature rise. So again, finding that balance between that protection and that lightweight capability. Then last but not least, gloves. You don't need anything crazy. Um, and certainly my own personal preference is I want something that's still pretty warm. Um, I wanted something that was waterproof, but I wanted something that was going to give me some good dexterity as well, so I don't have to take them off grabbing stuff around camp. So these are really nice, lightweight, waterproof gloves by I believe it's called Cyrus or Cirrus, S-E-I-R-U-S. They have a, a waterproof membrane inside, so they are fully waterproof. It's almost like a neoprene kind of material on the exterior. They do have some rubberized grips on the palms, make sure you can grab stuff. Um, but last year, doing my winter backpacking trip in February, um, I just had regular like, um, like cotton or wool gloves on, and they got soaking wet, and my fingers got cold, and it was just miserable. So this year, I didn't want, that, didn't want to allow that to happen, um, so I opted to get the waterproof gloves, especially during the winter, just, just to give me some extra protection there. Um, uh, you know, 
I can always stick my hands into my pockets to keep them warm. I can always get a fire going to keep myself warm and stuff. So I just want something nice and simple, nice and lightweight, but still gets the job done. Now, a big reason that people get themselves into trouble for carrying too much weight is because they carry too many, uh, what I like to call, just-in-case items. Now, during the winter, you want to bring some just-in-case items. But if you can relegate that to primarily an extra layer of clothing and an extra half a day or a full day's worth of food, um, that's, going to, that, that's going to be more useful to you. Those things are going to be more useful to you. Then, then bringing, then bringing, uh, you know, an extra hoodie or, or a win big, uh, you know, winter jacket or, or snow pants and stuff like that. You know, you got to find that balance between lightweight but efficient. So obviously, I bring one extra layer of clothing and I bring an extra half a day's to a full day's worth of food. Um, food, especially, keep yourself well fed, keep that internal engine churning, so you can keep yourself warm from the inside out. As well as if you do run into inclement weather and things, and you got to hunker down, that's a day that's wasted. Which means you're going to go through your, you're going to have to go through food. You're still going to have to eat and things. Which means you have an extra day worth of food and things that you have to prepare for. So having an extra half a day to a full day's worth of food, whether you just are hungry, you want to want some extra food, you want some extra warmth, or as well you run into a bind, it really goes a long way. And of course your layering system. So. Like I showed you before, those REI base layers, these are twofold. I can either wear these during the day if I need to keep my legs a little bit warmer. They are breathable, moisture wicking, of course, nice and lightweight. But if I feel like I need an extra layer on my legs, I'll toss these over the top of my smart wool base layers, and they certainly do add some, add some pretty substantial warmth for me. Uh, these really go a long way. They're nice and lightweight, um, pretty inexpensive as well. I don't mind beating them up a little bit. And certainly, I know, I know, I know, I might be sweating them in them during the day, but again, they're so thin, so breathable, I really haven't had any problems with sweating in them. So I feel okay wearing them on top of my smart wool base layers just to give me one extra layer of protectant. And then, of course, I simply just have an Under Armour cold weather gear. Um, you know, obviously, all stretchy, it's form-fitted, very nice and warm. Moisture wicking, breathable, the whole nine yards. Uh, these are great. You know, certainly I could look at something maybe a little bit lighter weight or, or uh, more midweight in uh, you know smart wool shirt or something like that. But I also opted for these because I wanted something where if it gets really bad during the day, I could put this on, keep myself warm, keep myself dry, and I don't have to bulk up during the day and stuff. So again, these. These are twofold, whether I wear them during the day or one extra layer of protecting at night, it really goes a long, long way while still maintaining something that's pretty nice and lightweight. So, okay, guys, you know, that, that's my clothing system. That's my layering system. That's what I bring during the winter. As you can see, I'm not bringing a whole lot of clothes with me. You might think I'm crazy for not bringing a whole lot of clothes, but the performance of these clothes with the combination of everything far outweighs bringing so many extra layers and, and extra weight that really just isn't necessary. If I can get the best efficiency out of the items that I'm already bringing, um, and, and especially choosing the right things that I know are going to withstand the cold temperatures and the elements that I'm going to experience out there, I'm all better for it. You know, I'm trying to keep my weight down. I know I'm carrying extra weight, carrying extra food. I'm carrying extra clothing. I'm carrying a couple other little items as well. You know, I'm not trying to jump up into the 40, 45 pound mark. So last year when I did my full week, um, you know, I was on my own for five full days. So I had to have five full days worth of food. I was only maxing out about 32 pounds overall for my winter gear set. And that was tent and everything. So the fact that I'm able to keep it at sub 35 pounds, but have clothing and, and food and things like that to keep me really nice and warm is, you know, I'm just thoroughly impressed. You know, especially some of the items like the Arcteryx jacket, those fleece pants. I'm extremely impressed with how those have performed. Kept me really nice and warm. I am so glad that I've gotten them. They're some of my favorite pieces of equipment. So I hope this helped you guys out a little bit. Um, you know, and I understand winter backpacking is not for everybody. You know, finding, finding the right equipment first and foremost is absolutely important. <clears throat> But absolutely, get, and, and something else that's important is getting yourself in the right mindset. 
you have to understand that you're going to be waking up every day with cold temperatures. You're going to have to put up with cold fingers and cold feet. And, you know, you're going to have to you're going to have to learn different ways of dealing with that and certain remedies for that stuff as well. So a great way to kind of gear yourself up is to start out with some car camping. You know, winter car camping. That way, just in case your clothing system isn't up to snuff, in case you're not fully mentally prepared for, for you know, some of the weather and stuff you'll be experiencing, at least you'll be able to either A, hop in your car, warm yourself up, or B, pack your stuff up, get in your car, get home, and get the safety. But it's a great way to kind of ease yourself into the full-fledged backpacking. Um, certainly... Certainly, I, I encourage you to start getting into the winter backpacking. I love seeing people out on the trail during the winter. Who says you only have to go backpacking during warm weather? I actually love backpacking during the winter. It allows me to get a great fire going. I can bring great food with me. I can bring hot dogs and baked beans. I bought eggs and bacon and, and chicken and steaks and baked potatoes and stuff before. You're surrounded by a natural refrigerator. So go nuts with it. Enjoy it and create a great experience out of it. You know, a big reason why I love winter backpacking because it's it's another challenge. You know, it's challenging out there, but when you can overcome those, not not just overcome those, but excel in those circumstances, you 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 feel so great. You see, you feel so good about yourself doing it. Um, you know, it's, it's extremely rewarding being able to face that kind of adversity, and like I said, not just get through it, but excel through it. It's fantastic. So definitely, I would recommend start start. You know, working your way into it. Don't don't dive right into it because you can get yourself into some good trouble there. But I absolutely encourage you to go and try it out. You know, it's not for everybody, but it's always worth trying once, right? So, guys, I hope that gave you some good information. Um, I hope that you know. I hope you're able to take uh, take some lessons learned from this and help improve your own system. And I really hope you take some of it, go out, try it out, and I hope you enjoy yourself with it as well. So if you do go winter backpacking, you try some of the layering systems as I described here before, you know, let me know how that goes for you. And again, if you have any questions, give me, give me, a, give me a comment in the section below. Check out the links in the description. Check out my Instagram page. I have some great pictures on there. Look forward to talking to you guys again in the near future. And as always, I thank you again for following along. I'll talk to you real soon. Baba Ganoush out.